Who is Patrick David Mackay? Born 25th of September 1952, a British serial killer who confessed to murdering 11 people in London and Kent between 1974 and 1975. Born to Harold Mackay and his wife Marion, a woman of Creole descent, whom he'd met in Guyana. As a child, Mackay was often a victim of physical abuse at the hands of Harold. When Mackay was 10, his father died from a heart attack on his way to work, a result of complications of alcoholism and a weak heart. His final words to his son were, ironically, remember to be good. A young Patrick was unable to come to terms with the loss of his father, telling people he was still alive and always kept a photograph of him on his person. He refused to attend the funeral in Scotland and later assumed the role of father figure within the family, often beating his mother and two sisters. His mother Marion eventually moved the family from Dartford to Gravesend, but family life did not improve and the police were called to the home as frequently as four times a week. Mackay was removed from his family home on 18 occasions between the ages of 12 and 22 and put into various specialist schools, institutions and prisons. During this time, both the police officer and teacher predicted that Patrick would go on to kill. Mackay was prone to extreme tantrums and fits of anger and indulged in animal cruelty and arson, at one point setting his pet tortoise on fire. He bullied younger children, stole from elderly women's homes and from people in the street, and even attempted to kill his mother and aunt. He also attempted to kill a younger boy, and later said he would have succeeded had he not been restrained. He also attempted to set fire to a Catholic church. At 15, he was diagnosed as a psychopath by psychiatrist Dr. Leonard Carr, who predicted Mackay would grow up to be a cold, psychopathic killer. In October 1968, he was committed to Moss Side Hospital, Liverpool, as a diagnosed psychopath. He was released in 1972. As he entered adulthood, Mackay developed a fascination with Nazism, calling himself Franklin Bolvod I and filling his flat with Nazi memorabilia. He then lived in London and was frequently drunk or on drugs. In 1973, near his mother's home in Kent, he met and was befriended by a priest, Father Anton Kroon. Despite this friendship, Mackay broke into Crean's home and stole a cheque for £30. Although Crean tried to persuade the police not to, Mackay was arrested and prosecuted. He was subsequently ordered to pay compensation, but never did. The incident caused a rift between the two, and Mackay returned to London. It was around this time Mackay later claimed he had drowned a tramp in the River Thames. On the 21st of March 1975, then aged 22, Mackay, using an axe, returned to kill Father Crean at the priest's home in the village of Sean, hacking through the victim's skull and watching him bleed to death. He was swiftly arrested after a police officer recalled the earlier incident with the Czech some 18 months earlier. Mackay was soon considered by police to be a suspect in at least a dozen other killings over the previous two years, mostly victims being elderly women who had been stabbed or strangled during robberies. Mackay later claimed to have murdered 11 people. Mackay was eventually charged with five murders, but two charges were dropped due to a lack of evidence. In November 1975, he was convicted of manslaughter due to diminished responsibility and sentenced to life imprisonment. Still imprisoned more than 44 years later, he is reported to be among 50 or so prisoners in the United Kingdom, incarcerated under a whole life tariff and unlikely ever to be released. Mackay is currently being considered for release after reportedly spending time in an open prison. However, in June 2020, the hearing of the parole board has been postponed amidst a fresh investigation into Mackay's involvement in unsolved murders. Patrick Mackay has come from the segregation block at Parkhurst. He served in five life sentences for manslaughter and robbery. 
Just to tell you that Mackay's arrived safely. No problems with the escort. That seems to have gone okay, and his personal officer's taken him for a tour of the unit now. Uh, Albany, have you ever been Albany? Albany, yes, I was at Albany in 1986, uh, uh, I think I was at Albany for a short period of time. No, I wasn't there too long, actually. Uh, I didn't particularly like the... Still on control lock, Albany, yeah. it? Not anymore, They've, they're back on the keys. I thought they were on, like, only six at a time, slot out, and the riots. Well, I got there just after the riots. I mean, do you feel at the time of the offence you were a psychopath or behaving psychopathically? From the point of view of somebody who is supposedly using that label to enjoy taking human life, there was never, ever any suggestion in my mind that I was ever a psychopath if one was to use that criteria. I could have perhaps understood some people being rather uncertain as to whether or not I was. But I certainly have never considered myself psychopathic if one takes the criteria that one gets a special enjoyment out of killing. No such enjoyment have I ever had. I've never found any pleasure out of any such thing.